testing microphone. Right, so I don't know. Looks like someone is watching this. I have no idea how live works, and I thought while I'm knitting a recovery bridle of some sort, I'll just put live on and see what happens. So I'm trying to figure out just how it works. So, uh, the idea here is to first of all figure out how, how life works. And if you are watching this live, you can actually uh, write a comment and I'll see if there's any comments and then I'll talk to you. The idea here is to make a recovery bridle out of an old but fairly strong nylon rope. Now, the reason I'm saying it's illegal is because it's a rope that's been in the sun for a long time, so it's probably not the best idea to use it. But instead of throwing it away, I'm just going to make it a bridle to, ex to, to extend uh, my reach when I'm doing a recovery. Usually my first tool for the for recoveries is just a shovel and uh, I'm seeing the microphone is working. If the sound is not great, put it in the chat because I haven't figured out how I can hear whether the sound is working at all. And I'll see if I can adjust it. So the idea here is I'm going to make a loop. And I'm going to braid this or splice it back in. And I'm putting a loop of string around it just to protect it from chafing or rubbing. And if this is uh, visible, it's maybe the background is too light. We change it like this. Does it work? Change it like this, maybe a bit better. So th these are three ropes, and I'm going to braid it into one long one with loops in the end. And generally, I'm just interested to see how live works, and if it works. Saying 21 people online, but I have no idea whether you're actually online. Now, braiding is a long thing, takes a long time, so I'm not sure how good that is, is as a live thing. But this is what I'm doing on a Sunday afternoon when I've got a bit of time messing around with gear and stuff. If someone is actually watching out there, just put a comment or something. And of course, driving on a trail or driving next to the river would be a much better video to use as a live but there's no reception out near the river so we're gonna have to make do with what we have all right sound is fine it's working great to use any tools or just by your fingers um for now i'm just going to use my fingers usually i've got the kind of marlin spike that i made for myself and I've got a kind of a, a embroidery needle, heavy duty embroidery needle that I also made for myself. Looks like an embroidery needle. Uh, but in this case, I don't think I'm going to use anything. I'm just going to run it with my hands. 
and see how it goes. So let me see if I can show you up close by how this is going. So I'm knitting it around and I'm making half pitches all around. So it makes a nice, can you see that? The light is a bit funny. Let's see if I can. So then I'm going to loop it around like this. And this is going to do two things. It's going to hold it together so that when I'm braiding, it's not all getting messed up. And it's going to also help against chafing and rubbing. Let's see who else is writing. Archie, hi yours. Wendy, I can hear you clearly. Paul Ferreira, I'm watching you. What's going to braai? Now my ears are nasty. What, what, Isaac, uh, what parents did Milo have? Milo's parents were working parents from a, uh, from the Calvinia area. So uh, Milo's parents are working parents, working dogs, sorry. Uh, Milo came to us, he was going to be a working dog, but from the litter, the breeders, decided that his characteristics, his personality is more suited to being a uh, kind of pet uh, house dog than it is to uh, actually understood. He needs more attention that, than what a working dog. But I'm no expert in sheep dogs, so I'm not really sure. Let's just see how that goes. Okay, so what else? Background is too light. I understand the background is too light. I don't have much of, much of an option here. Let's see if I turn it like that. Is that working? Is it adjusting? I think that's a bit better. Is that better? <laughs> uh, but Milo parents, half croc, half wildebeest. Yeah, Milo is a favorite. Milo? He's just sitting there. Oh. He's here. Uh, now he's going to wonder why I called him over. He's going to be under my feet all the time. So he likes doing this. And I'm going to try and see if this works without me dropping the camera. He likes to be there. That's exactly his position. And one of the things about Milo is that he looks all fluffy and friendly, and he is friendly, but he is kind of a guard dog. So when visitors come over, people stop here. He's usually between my legs like that, and he's not the friendliest in that kind of situation. Let's see if I can show this off. Again, let's see if I put another background. Let, let's put myself as a background. So I'm going to try and do a kind of splice here. And it's a simple braid. I've turned it around and I'm lost. Like that. Okay, like that. That's a bit small, but it only needs to take a soft shackle. Uh, so it doesn't need to be very big. And then we'll just do the braid upside down like that. And let's see how this goes. It should be plenty strong. Now, I wouldn't use, I know someone's going to comment, I wouldn't use this in a snatch recovery unless I've got it doubled and tripled up and there's no uh, metal involved at all. It's not ideal. Uh, I have to remember which way I was going. Let's see other comments. Hi, yours. Volg die strand. Hi, Lino Steenkamp. Let me just go back to the top here. Francois Gib. Uh, Mason, South Africa. Wendy, Archie, Paul, Ferrer, Habs, Zach. Haba, String SA. Uh, string, string SA is the background better now. Like I said in the beginning, for those who only joined recently, this is I've never done live. I'm just curious about what live is. I've got a bit of time today. So we're testing live. The uh, clunk is good. Thanks. 
Philippi Barense, kan jy sien of ek deur kom, yes, you true, dit is deur, Milo Crossbreed, nou, Jack, Milo is not a crossbreed, he is a, he is a Kelpie, both parents were Kelpies, uh, so he is a, pure, ja, there will be some, comments about him, per ongeluk, ok, let nou steenkamp, per ongeluk op die livestream afgekom, sal daak een bykie meer kijkers hee, as jy voor die dit verteer, for sure, so the idea, let me just see if I can put the camera back, without having it fall off there, uh, and without losing my place in the braid, no, let's just finish, this part of the braid first, I'm going to finish it, uh, I haven't thought about, I'm going to finish the braid, so this is what it looks like now, it's a bit rough, uh, I probably have to work it back into, double it back in here, just end it off in there, yep, I have to do it differently, okay, I'll see about that in a moment, uh, Francois Gibbs, I'm watching from Scotland, wow, so Scotland, that's two hours behind us, so that's mid-Sunday afternoon, or late Sunday afternoon, it's already five o'clock. What's the fish fang ons op die rivier, en fang jylle gereeld? So the question there is fishing, ons fang geel vis, jy sê die baber, ons fang so nou in aan baber, the river has been really uh, weird the last couple of years, so we haven't, uh, I think you figured out how to finish the braid, and this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, I think I've got a good plan for finishing the braid, so that there are no loose ends, and that is going to be by tucking those long loose ends out, let me just unhook it, by tucking these other ends through it. Uh, that is going to mean that I am going to have to pull all of that long rope through it, but it means there are no knots and it can't come loose. Anyway, I'll show you in a moment. So, it's basically, there was one loop and one of the loose strands or the tail ends are going to go through that loop. So the question, sorry, I was busy asking a question. Uh, what's the fish? What fish are we catching? So there's a lot of barber, big barber. And if you go for them, you're sure to get something big. Uh, the biggest around the air that I've seen was about 28 kilos. Then the yellowfish, gilfish, uh, largemouth and smallmouth yellowfish. They are abundant, and they are, I'm going to feed the other two tails through as well, just to make sure it's locked in, let's see. So the other two tails are also going to go through the braid. Okay, so large and small mouth yellows are abundant. We do catch a lot, but the last two years we've had abnormal amounts of rain which meant the river level was much higher and you could still catch with bait but I don't catch much with bait uh, when I catch I'm catching and releasing and I'm also mainly concentrating on uh, spinner or fly fishing in the last couple of years I'm mainly doing fly fishing so with the flooding river that was not common in 2020 or 2021, just after COVID, lockdown stopped. We had some fishermen out here who were really good with it, really kind of professional. And let me get, I can't get the camera higher. It's kind of rickety on a stand like that, that there. So these fishermen came and they kind of know what they're doing. And they went specifically for yellowfish. And they caught the biggest was... 19 kilo largemouth yellowfish. Now, 19 kilo freshwater yellowfish is, uh, you know, uh, all stories about fishermen and measurements. But anyway, 
that's quite a big fish. They don't get much longer beyond uh, about nine, ten kilos. They don't get much longer, but they get fatter and thicker. So I'm not sure. I haven't planned this out well enough. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do the braid without getting too far away from the camera. I'll probably have to smooth it out. Let's just see who else is talking. Um, watching from Scotland. Uh, okay, Robin Birker said he's a Labrador and Ridgeback. Uh, he would be much bigger if he were if he was a mix of one of those. Um, can, can Johnny Dale can us donations do for Milo? I think Milo is such a happy dog. I don't think he needs donations. Um, make some suggestions where we can use Milo in videos. I, it was interesting. Milo features in the videos and a lot of the comments are about Milo and it's probably his personality and he's watching me as I'm, every time I mention his name, his ears perk up and he's looking at me. But really, I'm making videos for the fun of it and the moment something like the nation starts up, then you're kind of obligated to do stuff I like just doing videos as I'm doing it at the moment, just for fun. I did uh, did my first uh, kind of sponsorship. I wasn't going to do sponsorships with the EcoFlow power supply. And it put so much pressure on because I was, my time was so limited that I didn't really enjoy the process. So we'll have to see how things go. This guy, this rope feels kind of, uh, it looks, it's nylon, it looks kind of strong, but it isn't really. So I'm starting to wonder, I know it was a bad idea going into it, but I'm starting to wonder whether it's even worth doing it. But maybe just for a kind of long reach for light duty purposes. Um, okay, one of the questions that I was waiting for. Hi, uh, yours. Uh, next one, that's from Stefani Fechter. She's always liking her videos, leaving a comment. Johnny Dale as well. Uh, what, what is the stand of Koga Dam? The, oh, the Koga Dam. That's probably a good one to talk about. Koga Dam is currently rising at about 0.8%. It was at 30... Uh, let's see if I can get it here. It was at about, about 54% this morning, if I'm not correct and it's rising at just under one percent per day at the moment which is quite good let me just find it it was at 53.35 yesterday so it will be at 54 today it will probably be 55 tomorrow morning uh, which is quite good for those who don't know the last time it was above 50 percent was in 2015 or after the 2015 rainy season. And 2015 was the last time it overflowed. Uh, let me just get back to... Uh, yes. Philip Barnsen. Philip P. Barnsen. Lionel, Lionel Kingma, do you have any family in the Eastern Gate? For sure. My, my family are all originally from the Eastern Cape. Uh, oh, actually, no, Western Cape, and then moved to the Eastern Cape. And that's a that's a question. Uh, my grandfather started farming in the Gamtoos, on the Koga Gamtoos River, in uh, the early 1900s. 19, the first time we went there was 1903 as a kid. And he's been farming there, well, he's passed away since, but he's been farming there since... The mid 1920s, if I'm not, I'm a bit vague on that exact date. I he wrote a book about the Kaham to and uh, I've got the book, I've got his name, and I have the book, and I'm busy working on videos about the Kaham to and Koga. I'll, I'll make a just a teaser video about the content that I have because I have pictures of Koga Dam being built. Of course, he was quite involved in the whole process. 
and uh, that that was a it, it was the earliest double bowed it was the first double bowed dam built in South Africa so it was a test bed for uh, dams like the uh, Harib Dam, the Van der Kloof Dam, uh, a lot of those, uh, the higher dams, dams with higher, uh, uh, this is going to trip me up, I'm going to have to separate these lines first before I start the process. Uh, I'll probably run these to a side, but this, is, this was the general idea, and I'll do it, but I'll have to concentrate on what I'm doing. I don't think we're going to continue this live feed uh, much longer just because I don't know what I'm doing and I'll have to see. So questions, Jakub Oosthuizen, yes, thanks. I've had a very good weekend. Uh, the, let, let me just, the Kogap, the Eastern Cape, I have, let, let's do one like this. Potency school. I was in Potency school. And in, when my youngest brother was in uh, first grade, what is first grade? Sub R, the old Sub R. He, he had, there were, I think, 21 pupils in his class. And 18 of them were related to him. That's what, how the family in the Eastern Cape is. So I have a lot of family in the Eastern Cape. My origins are all over there. Uh, my father is still farming in the Eastern Cape. My brother is there farming. About six or seven of my uncles and aunts are in there farming. Uh, it's all curled up. I'm going to have to work through all of this. Uh, so yes. There's a lot of family there. Uh, I've got it all nice and tied up. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, okay, so Jakub Oosthuizen, what do we do with all those trees in the background? Those are date trees. We farm with dates. And we don't sell the trees, but we sell the fruit. Uh, they are flowering now, so there's always a lot of questions about dates, and there's always a lot of questions about farming in general. And the farming bit is a bit problematic because I'm I'm not really allowed to talk about it in the videos that much. There may be a time coming where it would be possible, but I'm not yet sure. Uh, okay, so Johnny Dale, where was you school? In the interschool of in Perl. Johnny, I was in Potency in the school. And I was... That was long ago. Uh, Potency, and after that I went into Utenaik Technical School, uh, Daniel Pinar. So Utenaik, Eastern Cape, all, all over the Eastern Cape. Let me just tie this in a knot. I think, I think we're going to draw a line on the live feed there. I think we answered some questions. I think it was a good one. I understand a little bit better about how the live feed is working. But let's not push it too far. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the videos that I'm making about the book, but the problem with those videos is there's a lot of work in it. There's a lot of research material, and it will have to be a series that will be in a year or so's time. Uh, it's all about the floods in the Eastern Cape in the early, mid-1900s, mid even late 1800s, up to recent times. Although... Floods are not a big thing in the recent times. It's more droughts these days. Anyway, I think that's good. KB sound is fine. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Lisa, 
moet, moet gaan helpen. Kos maak, zien jou volgende keer. Geniet die YouTube kanaal in de Yes, greetings from Bulgaria. Greetings from Bulgaria, Sean Bosch. Thanks for the live feed. Man. Uh, and people say thanks for the overview about EcoFlow. Let's just talk something about the EcoFlow before we sign off. Something that happened with the EcoFlow is we had the EcoFlow video, we had an agreement about uh, what I would do in the video, and the agreement was basically I'll show how I use it. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to try and sell it. I'm just going to show how I'm using it. And uh, in the end, they contacted me and said that there's going to be a discount code that viewers can use if they buy it. But they contacted me uh, an hour or so be before the video went live. So I had no way to put it in there. I did put that link in the description of that EcoFlow video. So if you go to the EcoFlow video and you're interested in buying the have a sale on it, and if you use that link and code, then you get another discount, which makes it a lot more uh, affordable. Although it's a quite an expensive product, but it's really, a, really a good product. Let me, I need to put this rope out there, pull it out straight. Let me do one thing before we sign off. We're currently running the computer and everything from off the EcoFlow. Here you have, it's off the EcoFlow because I don't, didn't want to run out the lead. It was just easier to do that than to run out the lead outside. And I wanted to do it outside because inside is, oh, the lighting's not good. Anyway, I think that's going to be it. Uh, so that's going to be it. Thanks for those who watched and did comments. Thanks for uh, joining this first live feed. And we'll do one in the future. I have to braid this up now. See you on the next one. Cheers, guys.